if it means moving from one province to another just to find a way to remain in hello beautiful people welcome back to the canada info channel my name is wolo if you're new to this channel please subscribe to this channel I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. I am based in New Brunswick, Canada. I used to live in Manitoba. I am still a Manitoban. And the reason why I say this is because not everybody knows that I am actually now living in New Brunswick. So to my New Brunswickers, please gear up. I will soon start showing New Brunswick to the world. Yes. Okay. So to my old subscribers, thank you. Um, the last time I was trying to learn the Ghanaian word, the Ghanaian tree, they call it tree. I don't know whether it's tree, but I saw Twi. The spelling is T-W-I, but from my listening to the word, it's not actually pronounced as Twi. It's pronounced as tree. I don't know if I pronounce it well. Meda se pa. Did I get it well? Anyway, please bear with me. If I didn't get the thank you word in Ghana very well, but I tried. Abi, didn't I try? And then there's Asante, that's thank you in Swahili. And then I also talk about my own. Uh -uh, I'm an Isoko girl, so I need to talk about thank you in Isoko. Isoko wado, urobo wado, hey, yes. So thank you for being loyal to this channel. Um, you know, I don't double into politics, but from what I know, everything that's actually going on is geared towards 2025. I'll just talk about the things that I feel that are being talked about because of the elections that will take place in 2025. And immigration is a hot topic in Canada. It's a very hot topic right now in Canada. And it's going to determine a lot of things, especially um, after the elections in 2025. We we'll would know if the current government, which is Trudeau, will still remain in power or we would have a new government. And, you know, we have the conservative, we have the NDP and we have the liberals. Those are the three major parties in Canada. I've talked about this before. I think during the last election i did talk about the way the canadian political system is classified but uh, the the reason why i'm talking about um politics and immigration is because immigration determines a lot um the feelers from what's actually been going on is that most canadians are overwhelmed with the number of people the number of temporary residents in canada and they want to blame people or blame immigrants, blame temporary residents for a lot of things. And you wouldn't blame them, especially when there are negative sides to immigration. First of all, when you have too many people and you just have few structures in place, few structures like um, hospitals, few hospitals, few schools, um, few, you know, some of these social structures that they've put in place, and then you have a lot of people, then you not experience wait times. So when they experience these negative things, they want to blame the temporary residents uh, because of the population growth. And to think of it, I feel that Canada actually needs population growth because compared to our counterparts, which is the US, the population is still small. Land mass in Canada is very large. And then the population of Canada is just too small for such a large land mass. So I feel that the people who are complaining that immigration or the levels of immigration is too much, they have genuine reasons for complaining because the, the facilities that they can access, they can no longer access them at the time they are supposed to access them. Imagine you trying to see a doctor and then before now, if you want to see a specialist, let's say it can take you one month, two months on the wait list before you can see the specialist. Right now, it's taking as long as one year, two years to see a specialist. That's because of the population. They have not put in place the structures to absorb the population that would, you know, actually lead to growth. That's why we have this. And because it's a social system, the Canadian system is a social system, not like the US system that is a capitalist system. Um, before the government will put in structures to expand, they will do a lot of analysis and all of that. That's why um, for capitalist systems like the U.S., one person can just go ahead and build a hospital. They don't need to wait for the government to give approvals. But the Canadian system is not like that. As a result of that, the Canadian government is actually making efforts to remove undocumented immigrants. I'll put the publication that I read recently concerning um, undocumented immigrants where the immigration minister was saying that there is no plan 
to regularize undocumented immigrants. And it is sad that a lot of people who actually came into Canada lost their status in the process. And if you read what is going on in the news recently, a Nigerian that came into Canada using an agent that got her a fake admission into University of Regina, unfortunately, because of that, just one fake document. Now she and her family, they, ha they are out of status and they are being asked to leave Canada, unfortunately. So this is actually um, part of the plan to reduce the temporary residence in Canada. And my own advice, the advice I'm going to give is if you're in Canada, please try as much as possible to remain in status. And if your work permit is expiring, it's better to get a visitor's visa so that you can actually switch from work permit to visitor's record, you know. And then you can still stay six months and then you can still extend your visitor's visa while you try to sort yourself out. So try as much as possible not to lose your status because I've seen this thing over and over again where um, people come in legally, like international students come in legally and then along the line, they lose their status. For some of them, it's just for minor reasons like not having a valid passport to renew their status. So these impacts a lot and these are the category of people that canada is working towards removing just to reduce the number of temporary residents in canada so please try as much as possible to remain in status do not go out of status if you see that you've tried all you can to remain in status and it's not working it is better to actually leave canada and then find a way to come back to canada through a permanent means and that is why I talk about ways to become permanent residents in Canada. And um, if you check my previous videos, you will see lots of videos that I feel are still relevant till today. If it means moving from one province to another just to find a way to remain in Canada or get a permanent residency, please do so. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Canada, oh Canada, come together. Oh Canada, oh Canada.